I'm going to be talking about something that makes me and you very, very powerful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, all I can say is that doesn't normally happen. Um, <laughs> My name's Sophie Scott and I'm a cognitive neuroscientist working at University College London and I'm very interested in human brains and how they deal with human communication so how my brain's controlling the sounds of the speech that I'm making now and how your brain's able to decode that information and also tell all sorts of other stuff from me about my voice you couldn't see me you could tell I was a woman you could tell if I was angry that's all there that's part of what's going on and this is the room that we use a lot for recording stimuli for our studies of this under nature this is called an anechoic chamber and it's so called because there are no echoes in here so you get this very clean sound which is very good for um, making good recordings that we can then analyze acoustically and use in our brain imaging studies but it also means that um it's a slightly unpleasant environment to be in because you don't get any of the normal room sound that you get when you're moving around buildings. There's, there are no echoes and it always feels to me like I've got something wrapped around my head. The study that I'm going to talk a little bit about today is some stuff specifically that we've been doing on laughter and I'm very interested in human laughter. It seems to be uh, very unlike certain other emotions that we express so unlike things like fear or anger we use laughter in a very social way so laughter is used very widely in conversation and in play and we will pay good money to go and see people make us laugh now, I, I know what you're thinking <laughs> we could also see quite a long evolutionary history as with some of the other basic emotions for laughter so we're not the only animals that laugh chimpanzees laugh gorillas laugh and there's even evidence that rats laugh and uh, one of the things that we've been doing is looking at, for example, what happens in your brain when you hear the sound of somebody laughing because they're helpless with laughter or because they're sort of laughing in a more social way. And that required us to get people into the anechoic chamber and then do whatever it took to make them laugh. How's that? A few more. <laughs> <laughs> And um, that was interesting. Sometimes that was harder than other times. But we found actually it worked best if we got groups of people who were friends and then they found it a lot easier to make each other laugh. <laughs> so, you know, the, even to get the real laughs for our stimuli, we were using the kind of social aspect of, what, of how laughter works to, to really help us get us on our way. There we go. <laughs>